time to call on my tour. My tour! Moby Dick and the Mighty Mitor, looking back at the 80s cartoon featuring a Thor-inspired prehistoric superhero. Back in the day, we did not have the luxury of having entertainment just one click away on our laptops and computers. Especially in our childhood, I'm sure we all have stories of waiting eagerly for the next episode of a cartoon series. There was a certain charm about those times when we made sure to tune into our favorite cartoons in specific time slots on TV. One such classic cartoon is Moby Dick and the Mighty Mitor which was first released in 1967 and offered an exciting ride into a prehistoric world full of action and adventure. Today, we will be exploring every aspect of this show and tell you everything there is to know about Moby Dick and the Mighty Mitor. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. What was the animated series all about? Moby Dick and the Mighty Mitor was an animated cartoon series that ran for one year from 1967 to 1968. It was produced by Hanna-Barbera Productions and was a classic American Sunday morning TV series. The episodes were about 22 minutes long and each episode was divided into three segments. The first and last segment focused on Mighty Mitor's adventures while the middle part covered the tales of Moby Dick. Mighty Mitor followed the story of a prehistoric teenage caveman who transforms into a superhero that protects his village from evil attacks. On the other side, the Moby Dick segment of the show covered the adventures of two teenage boys who befriended a whale called Moby Dick and then formed a group to explore the underwater worlds. The show ran for one season, had 18 episodes, and was initially broadcast on the CBS network. Let us explore it in detail and overview the first few episodes of this classic television show. Exploring the initial episodes and the overall narrative, the show first aired in September of 1967, consisted of three segments, The Monster Keeper, The Undersea World, and The People Keepers. The first segment, The Monster Keeper, introduced us to the world of the mighty Mitor. Tor was a prehistoric teenager who lived in a tribe under the leadership of Chief Pondo. He had a pet dragon named Tog, and the two often went on hunting trips together. On one such hunting trip, Tor sees an old man cornered by a gigantic dinosaur, and he immediately runs to the man's rescue. In return for saving his life, the man gives him a magical club. As Tor raises the club, he is transformed into the mighty Mitor, a big, muscular superhero with many powers. Even his pet dragon, Tog, is transformed into a much more powerful dragon that can now breathe fire and fly across the sky. Mighty Mitor also discovers that he can fly with the help of this power club, and together, he and Tog become the champion of the good and the nemesis of the evil. Mighty Mitor's tribal village was often attacked by various prehistoric monsters, wild dinosaurs, and other dangerous animals. His tribe was always on standby to fend themselves against such attacks and Tor helped them fight against these monsters. In one such instance, wild dinosaurs destroy their homes and uproot their trees when the village's chief Pondo wonders who was behind these attacks. He soon realizes that these animals are being commanded by Korg, an ex-member of their tribe who was banished. Korg returns to the tribe on top of a giant dragon and declares that he will take over the village and become the new chief. Korg even threatens the current chief to surrender his position, telling him that he will wait until sunrise for his answer. Korg further warns them that if he is not handed the title of the chief, then he will use his army of wild animals to destroy the village. Once Korg leaves, Chief Pondo gathers the people to discuss the menace of Korg. They decide that they will not give up easily and fight Korg. They start collecting rocks and stones to prepare for the fight, and Tor watches this scene from afar. He does not want his people to fight against such dangerous animals, and he uses his power club to transform into Mighty Mitor. 
Mitor then sets out with Tog to locate Korg, who is gearing up for his attack on the village. Mitor approaches Korg and asks him to give up his evil plans. Korg refuses to give them up, and instead, he decides to launch an attack on the tribe right away. Korg's army of dragons starts running toward Mitor, and Korg is optimistic that the beast will easily destroy Mitor. However, the superhero uses all his strength to defeat all the dragons in his path, while Tog also flies across the skies to fight some of the other dragons. Tog uses his fire breath to set a wooden log on fire, thereby blocking Korg's dragon's path. In the meantime, one of Korg's dragons gets his hands on the chief's teenage daughter, Shira. She calls Mitor for help, and Mitor flings his power club at the dragon, hoping it will set the animal off balance. The dragon frees Shira from its clutches and Mitor then flies across the sky to catch her before she falls to the ground. While Mitor is busy saving Shira, Korg approaches the village at a fast pace. However, Mitor appears at the very last second and shoots some blasts at the ground, causing a huge crack on the surface. This crack widens up and creates a hole that separates the village from the rest of the land surface. Korg's dragons don't have a way of crossing the gap, and Mitor declares that they will never be able to reach the village. Mitor then orders his pet Tog to fly across the skies and capture Korg. Mitor gets his hands on Korg and traps him in an island prison surrounded by hot lava. He then returns to their village and assures the people that they can return to their caves safely. Later, Mitor returns to his teenage form, Tor, and Shira tells him that Mitor was just fantastic as a hero. She even tells Tor that he can never be like Mitor and then walks away, while Tor and Tog laugh over their secret identity as this segment comes to an end. In the second segment of this episode titled Moby Dick, in the undersea world, two boys named Tom and Tub find themselves in the middle of the sea during a typhoon. They get swept up in this typhoon and end up miles away from their uncle's sea vessel. Tom and Tub soon discover that they are in shark infested waters and a giant white whale named Moby Dick rescues the two from the shark. Moby Dick even lets the two boys ride on him as Tom and Tub realize that they have found a new friend with whom they can explore the seas. Moby Dick and the two boys dive into the sea when an underwater earthquake disrupts their smooth adventure. They end up trapped in the corner of the sea when the earthquake causes a bunch of rocks to fall around them. They realize that they are now trapped and the only way to escape is by breaking down this wall of rocks. Just then, they notice a tiny hole that leads to a strange world under the sea. While Tom and Tub squeeze through the hole, Moby Dick struggles to pass through it. Tom and Tub are also accompanied by their pet seal Scooby as they make their way through the hole but soon find themselves in the grasp of a sea creature. Moby Dick spots the two boys in trouble and uses all of his strength to squeeze through the tiny hole to reach them. He frees them from this creature that resembles a giant spider. Though the two boys are now free, Moby Dick and this sea creature end up in a battle under the sea. Tom and Tub watch from afar as Moby Dick finally defeats this monster. However, the boys had been leaning against an open seashell and they lose their balance and get sucked into it while cheering for Moby Dick. Their seal Scooby uses its presence of mind to keep the shell open by wedging a stick between the openings of the shell. While this hack helps Tub come out of the shell, the stick soon gives up and Tom ends up trapped within the shell. Tub promises Tom that he will save him, and Moby Dick rushes to his rescue and saves Tom. The group gets ready to leave the place, but they are soon cornered by a group of sea creatures wielding sharp tridents. The boys and Scooby enter Moby Dick's massive body while he fights the creature off. Soon after, the boys get trapped in wild seaweed, and once again, Moby comes to their rescue. Their adventure seems unending, as Moby then finds himself surrounded by a bunch of angry eels. Finally, Moby manages to escape the ills by using his wits and the group sets out to leave the ocean. The boys and Moby Dick manage to escape this world under the sea and return to their regular waters when another earthquake causes some rocks to fall over the opening to the undersea and seals it away. The segment ends happily as Moby and his new friends float around the sea. Finally, the last segment of this episode titled The People Keepers brings us back to the prehistoric world of Mighty Mitor. In this episode, Shira's chaotic younger brother, Little Rock, makes his first appearance. Little Rock flies through the skies in a Mitor costume on his pet animal and pretends to be Mitor. 
Just then, he ends up in trouble with the dragon and finds himself cornered by this wild animal. The real Mitor soon comes to his rescue and throws the dinosaur into a swamp. Mitor then looks for Little Rock and spots him in a strange village full of giant insects that are holding some humans hostage. Little Rock is one of them and he is trapped in a prison. Mitor gets ready to attack the giant insects who wield huge whips as weapons. Mitor uses these whips against them and gets rid of the insects with some help from his pet dragon Tog. Mitor and Tog find themselves in the midst of an attack by various insects and they fight them off using their fire blast. Little Rock also uses his club to break free from his prison and wishes to help Mitor. However, Little Rock only ends up creating more trouble for himself and Mitor again uses his power club to build a firewall to protect Little Rock from insects. Little Rock assumes that it was his toy club that created this wall of fire and he boasts about it to she and the rest of the village people later. Mitor also frees all the humans who are being ruled by the giant insects, and the free people return to their village. The next episode began with a segment titled, Mitor Meets Tyranor, wherein chaos breaks out in their tribe when a huge boulder endangers she life. It so happens that Rog was training his dragon to throw huge rocks, and this rock ended up crashing into the ground at the tribe's base. she was walking around when the boulder hit, and Mitor, in his teenage form, Tor, saves she from being crushed under it. Rog shows up with his dinosaur by his side and introduces this beast as the or Tyranor. Rog then declares an open challenge to Mitor to fight this animal on the condition that Mitor cannot return to this village if he loses. Tor takes his leave to transform into Mitor and soon returns to accept his challenge. The battle begins and Tyranor lunges at Mitor with full force. Mitor and Tog dodge his attack by flying away and Mitor soon manages to overpower this beast. However, Rog now captures she and tells Mitor that if he does not lose, then she is finished. Mitor decides to let Tyranor win while Tog saves she -Ra. Once she is safe, Mitor decides to fight Tyranor in earnest. He manages to defeat the dinosaur and then chases Rog away as the segment comes to an end. In the next segment titled The Crab Creatures, Tom and Tub ride Moby Dick while searching for a ship. Scooby spots the ship and Tom and Tub follow him to explore it while Moby wanders around the sea. However, Tom and Tub are unaware that some crab creatures are following them, and these crabs capture Tub. Tom rushes to find Moby, and the group then searches for Tub. They end up in trouble with a large group of crab creatures, but Moby comes to their rescue as usual. Finally, in the last segment of this episode titled Brutor the Barbarian, Mitor runs into trouble with Brutor and his group of barbarians. Brutor attacks Tog with a rope and some heavy stones and the dragon loses balance as he falls to the ground. Tor locates Tog along with she and Little Rock and he soon takes his leave to transform into Mitor. Meanwhile, she and Little Rock return to their tribe to inform them that Brutor has returned. Mitor worries that his tribe will not be able to fight against Brutor, and he asks Brutor to back off and call off his invasion. Brutor refuses to listen to this warning, and his group of barbarians soon take over the village and start harassing the villagers. Little Rock also stirs up some trouble by leaving his cave as he wants to take down Brutor on his own. In the meantime, Mitor and Tog fight against Brutor and his men. Little Rock also shows up and attacks Brutor with his club. Meanwhile, Mitor uses his power staff to activate a dormant volcano. The volcanic eruption causes hot lava to fall on the barbarians, and Brutor soon gives up on his plans to invade Mitor's village. The episode ends with Little Rock boasting about getting rid of Brutor, while Mitor hides in plain sight as he once again returned to his regular Tor persona. The show's third episode kicks off with a segment titled the Bird People, wherein she is taken captive by the evil Bird People. Tor takes on his Mitor persona and sets out toward the lava pits to save she -Ra. In the meantime, the Bird People get ready to drown she in the lava pits as a sacrifice to their demon lords. Mitor reaches in time and faces a flock of killer birds. Mitor fights off all these birds while she is being pushed into the lava pits. Mitor uses his power staff to get rid of the Bird People and then save she -Ra leaving her quite impressed. The next segment again takes us back to the world of Moby Dick as they face an iceberg monster. Tom and Tub explore the sea when they come across a huge iceberg and there seems to be a monster frozen in the ice. 
The beast soon breaks free and lunges into an attack on Scooby the seal. Moby then appears to the rescue and fights this monster in order to free Scooby. Returning to Mighty Mitor's world, the last segment of this episode is titled Kragor and the Cavern Creatures. While She-Ra and Little Rock are out on a ride, they come across the cavern creatures and decide to return to the tribe to alert Mitor. She-Ra gets captured by the cavern creatures, but her pet elephant escapes and returns to the village to inform Tor that She-Ra is in trouble. Tor takes on his superhero persona and soon comes to She-Ra's rescue in the form of Mitor. Little Rock too appears at the scene and tries to fight the creatures on his own. He narrowly escapes an injury, and Mitor asks him to stay out of the rest of the fights. Mitor then uses a wooden log with sharp spikes to fight off the cavern creatures and turns his attention towards Kragor. Mitor defeats Kragor and safely returns to their village with She-Ra and Little Rock. He also seals the entrance to Kragor's caves to ensure he cannot escape for a long time. Mitor faces another group of villains in the next episode when the Tiger Men stir up some trouble for his tribe. They intended to attack Tor's tribe when it was nighttime. But Tor gets a whiff of their plans and he rings the alarm signal to warn the villagers. The Tiger Men locate Tor while he is ringing the alarm and they capture him and take him to their caves. However, Tog shows just in time to rescue Tor and he then quickly transforms into Mitor. Mitor and Tog then fly across the skies to the village in order to stop the Tiger Men from attacking the cave people. Mitor asks them to back off and then shoots at them with his powerful fire blast. He also sets fire to the Tiger Men's cave and arena, thereby making sure that they cannot use this place as their base for evil activities again. The next segment of this episode, titled The Saucer Shells, takes us back to Moby Dick and the two boys, Tom and Tub. The boys spot some dangerous saucer shells floating across the sea, and they seem to be troubling the dolphins and capturing them. Tom and Tub rescue one dolphin from the saucer shells, and these shells have some wild creatures hiding inside them. Moby Dick also fights against these saucer shells, and together they rescue the dolphins. However, one of the saucer shells then captures their pet still Scooby, and the group works together to save him. In the next segment of Mighty Mitor titled Return of Korg, the villainous Korg who had once been exiled by Chief Pondo now returns to cause more trouble. While the men of the tribe leave the village to go hunting, a gigantic beast wanders around the village and takes Shira captive. The other women of the tribe ring an alarm signal and Mitor soon finds out that Shira is missing and sets off to find her. We then find out that this monster was sent by Korg, who he has resurrected again to fight Mitor. Mitor and Tog follow the monster's footsteps and finally spot Shira tied to a wooden pole. Shira tells him that this is a trap, but Mitor refuses to leave. Korg then makes an appearance, commanding his monster to attack Mitor. After some struggling, Mitor defeats the beast, while Tog ends up in trouble as the dragon falls into some quicksand. However, nothing is impossible for the mighty Mitor, who manages to save Tog, rescue Shira, and defeat Korg all at the same time. Mitor then uses his power beam to send the monster far away, thus ensuring that Korg cannot use this beast for his personal gain again. The show's fifth episode begins with a segment called The Tusk People, wherein She-Ra runs into trouble while searching for her pet elephant. Mitor looks around for her and he finds footprints of the Tusk People. He is worried that they might have captured She-Ra, and his suspicions prove to be true as She-Ra has indeed run into trouble with the Tusk People while freeing her elephant from their grasp. Mitor fights all the Tusk People and finally defeats their leader before returning to safety with She-Ra. In the next segment, titled Sea Monster, Tom and Tub again run into trouble with some killer sea monsters when Moby Dick comes to the rescue. Finally, in the third segment of this episode titled The Snow Trapper, Tor and She-Ra discuss the dangerous snow trappers while Little Rock does not believe in these creatures and sets out to find one himself. Little Rock ends up in the snowy mountains when the snow trapper finally shows up and captures him. Rock's pet bird returns to the village and tells She-Ra that Rock has been captured and Shira decides to go out on her own to search for him. Tor later returns to the village to find Shira missing, and he turns into Mitor in order to rescue her and Little Rock. Mitor fights the Snow Trapper and defeats this icy monster before returning to their village with Shira and Little Rock. 
In this way, as the show progressed, Minotaur had to fight off many villains and protect the people of his tribe from every attack. He only appeared as Tor in front of the villagers and kept his mighty Minotaur persona a secret from the tribe. Only Tor's pet dragon Tog knew his true identity and the two often had a good laugh over his secret. All about the mighty Minotaur, the unique superhero we love. Minotaur was just a teenage caveman named Tor who one day rescued an old man who gifted him with a magical club to express his gratitude. When Tor raised this club high and pointed it to the sky, he transformed into the superhero known as Mighty Mitor, also known as the strongest man alive. Mighty Mitor was a muscular, well-built superhero who wore a mask to hide his true identity from the people in his village. He had many powers in his superhero avatar. Mitor could fly through the skies by using his magical club. He also possessed superhuman strength and became quite skilled in combat as he fought off crime and evil in his village. He could also use his club to shoot fire blasts as well as project energy and Minotaur used these powers and soon became a protector of the people. Since the show was based in a mystical, ancient universe, Minotaur had a weak pet dragon named Tog, who also transformed into a mighty fire-breathing dragon with the help of the magical club. Minotaur and Tog together fought off evil in their village and often came across the same enemies who made life difficult for his tribe. One of these enemies was Korg, who was exiled from Mitor's tribe many years ago and was still bitter about his exile. Other antagonists of the show were the Serpent Queen, Kragor, Rog, and Voltar. Kragor was the leader of the calving creatures that often stirred up trouble for Mitor's tribe, while Rog and Voltar were leaders of the Stone Men and the Vulture Men, respectively. Mighty Mitor also had certain features in common with Marvel's Thor, also known as the God of Thunder. Their names bore some resemblance since Mitor's original name was Thor. Moreover, both Mitor and Thor led dual lives as the heroes tried to keep a secret identity in their human form while doing good in the world. Both of them also wielded similar weapons. While Thor had a magical club that gave him powers, Thor had a divine hammer called Mjolnir. After the show ended, Mighty Minotaur's character made some appearances in TV shows such as Adult Swim, Scooby-Doo, Jellystone, and Space Jam. Minotaur was also included in a DC comic book series titled Future Quest, although this version was a newer version of Minotaur and had some variations. Marvelous Verdict, a wonderful union of an unusual superhero and Hanna-Barbera. Moby Dick and the Mighty Mitor was a well-loved television series that gave us many fond memories in our childhood. It was one of the best superhero-themed adventure series released by Hanna-Barbera Productions, and every episode was packed with action from start to end. The episodes also had a lot going on, with three segments that all explored different stories, and put out a lot of content in just 22 minutes. The show's animation was also quite commendable, and the character designs and unique storylines garnered some praise from the viewers. Among others, Paul Stewart voiced the character of Mighty Mitor, and all the voice actors also did a commendable job at bringing these characters alive. Fans especially loved the Mighty Mitor segments of the show, as he was quite an unusual superhero with fascinating powers. While the Mitor segments were packed with fighting and adventures, the Moby Dick segments were considered to be light-hearted fillers. Like other classic shows from this golden age of cartoons, this show also came with a toy figurine line. This toy line was launched by the French distributor Pin Pin Toys, who decided to capitalize on the popularity of the show in order to soar their toy sales in 1979. Today, these toys are considered to be a vintage set. Conclusion. To sum it up, Moby Dick and the Mighty Minotaur was a fantastic show with just the right combination of superheroes and lightheartedness. Mighty Minotaur was especially quite a hit as his superhero persona with a secret identity caught the viewers' attention. Though this show ran for just one season, it was a delight to watch and has a special place among classic cartoon series. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. Hmm. <sighs>